Everyone, welcome back to the shop. As you can see over there, over there, yeah, the tail section is still not done. Um, we'll get back to that later. Today, let's get the aileron servos mounted and figure out how we're going to hook up the ailerons. All right, I have not included you guys in how I'm getting the uh, servo mounts uh, set up to go ahead and, and slot them. As you can see, what I did is I came in, everything's marked out uh, with a little, it's probably, it's probably about a three thirty seconds, about a three thirty seconds drill bit. Uh, came in and then drilled out the corners, keep them round, and then just came in with Mr. Dremel and the cutoff wheel. So I cut the slots in it and then I'll just come in with a, uh, with just a razor knife. I'll just come in, as you can see, hopefully you, see, you can see. I'll come in, cut down between the knots, to between the holes on the front, on the back, and then this should just pop right out. So let me get the other side. Cut in, one, two, and it's out. So then I'll just come in with some sandpaper and uh, get those sanded up to the way I want them to look and uh, bring it right back. GoPro, start recording. All right, it's been a longish day for me and a very short day for you. All right, here's where I've gotten. It's a lot of stuff had to get done today around the shop, not in the shop, but around the shop. It's nice outside. It's almost 60 degrees and sunny out in March. How about that, March 1st? Hey, anyway, let me go ahead and show you where I am up to right now. All right, I went ahead and I didn't show you guys this stuff, how I did it. Just pretty much, you saw I drilled the holes. Uh, sanded it back with a multitude of little implements of abrasion. Um, and uh, then for there, mounted the little blocks that the servo attaches to and uh, screwed everything together and got it balanced out. And I had to slant these down in the back because it was going to get really close to, and I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but now we're close to a quarter inch away from there it was up high so i figured that it's a good possibility that if i when i covered it that was going to be really close to it um would it make it would it have an effect on it probably not but the fabric will dip down a little bit in this center section and it, it could have hit that one this side over here you can see i ground that one down too so this was uh after everything was fitted up uh, ready to go so but anyway what I did was I grabbed a little battery pack and one of these little doohickeys that if you don't have get one they're cheap they're very inexpensive um, you know it's Hobby King I think you can get it through Amazon too but I've got a couple of those so hi right, so seeing that I got this taken care of what I'm gonna end up doing is jumping on in uh, next and it's gonna be putting fillers in down here uh, that uh, uh, servo horn the control horn is going to attach to so I'm going to go ahead and mimic the same rib is here the tail end of it and I'll bring it out probably three eighths of an inch wide so it'll be like a half inch uh, uh, spot where I can go ahead and attach the uh, control horn to so let me get all that stuff set up and uh, bring it back show you what it looks like one week later yeah, it has actually been another week since I've been down in the shop. What I did last week, and you haven't seen it because you're going to see it today, after the uh, after I got the, uh, the servos mounted, I decided I wanted to start working on uh, hinging the ailerons. And yeah, I was trying to figure out if the template that I made for cutting the uh, the hinge lines in the ailerons on this would work with the ones I had from, that I made for my quarter scale um, Piper Cub and it wouldn't it was just because there were different animals altogether um, I went with the Robarts with the Piper Cub and this one I'm going with the Robarts the, the flats um, so what I decided to do was I just tried it on another piece of balsa to see how I can get the hinge to line up just the way I want it to where it's almost going to be even with the top where the aileron the joint is um, it's not going to bump up it's going to be even with it 
So it was, uh, it was a little bit of measuring and, uh, and testing and um, it worked out very nice. So yeah, I already did one wing and that's what I did last week. Now today I'm gonna show you how I did it. So what it came down to was getting the measurements on the hinge to see how far down it was gonna have to be so that way it always cleared it. Um, and once you get the line cut in there, you can go ahead and you can modify it because you're just cutting it with an exacto. So if you've got to raise it up a little bit or lower it down a little bit, you can do that. Um, how I ended up getting the measurement on the piece of uh, wood, the test piece, which I can't find. It's around here somewhere. Um, what I ended up doing was I've got one of these little gems. Um, yeah, it's actually made for woodworking. And this was from way, way back in the olden days. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Let's hold it up and see if you can see it. Hopefully you can. Um, that uh, patent date is 1872. So, yeah, that's how old this thing is. It's probably from, it's probably not from 1872. Uh, it's probably somewhere from 1873 on up to maybe the early 1900s. Um, cause I think the patent was maybe a 25 year patent. I don't know how the patents worked back then, but, uh, yeah, it's old and it's, it's nice and it still works. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, what we've got right here is approximately two millimeters. You can see from the, from pretty much the flat spot and then the, the little, uh, the little needle. Uh, it's about two millimeters, which is a little over a sixteenth of an inch. And what I did was I came in. And I don't know if you're going to see it, but I'll just show you how I do it on this. What I'm do is I come on in and I've got my lines, my start and my finish. And this sits on the top of the aileron, so you hold it flat. And then you just come on in, drag it across with it at an angle so you're not digging in. So just drag it across a couple times. And hopefully you can see it right there. There it is, that's my cut line. So I did this not only on the ailerons, but I also did it on the wing. And um, let me show you, cause I'm gonna bring the wing over here. Let me do it now. The wing is an interesting part. And what happened is it, it brought way too much question into my mind is whether I would trust this to hold the hinge. And I, and I really don't. So let's see if you can see, come on in and it's right there. So what I have to do is I have to come on in and put it right on top of that spar. And as much as I don't want to do that, it's what I have to do. So what I'm going to try to do with this is where it's going to come through because that spar is very thin. It's not very thick. I'm going to come on the inside in here and I'll go ahead and I'll put either another little piece of spruce on the inside. Um, and it'll probably be on this side, uh, either on this side, spruce or just some balsa. And then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and pin them, uh, just on, just on the wing. Cause the ailerons, it, it doesn't go straight in. It goes down at about a 30 degree angle. Um, so the aileron I'm not having an issue with, it's just the wing. So what I'll do is I can, I can either pin after I cover the wing or I can pin them before I cover the wing. So what I mean by that is if you're not, a, if you haven't done this in the past, let me see if I can find one. There we go. So what this is going to do is, as you can see, it's got the little holes in it. Not only can you use those holes for epoxy to grab in, um, you can put a pin through there. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably come on in and run one larger slot through this part here or just drill a little bit larger hole through that part of the thing and then either come through and, and I'll probably use toothpicks um, or balsa, I mean not balsa, uh, bamboo, um, just to go ahead and glue it in place because those are going to be epoxied. And so I'll just epoxy everything through with the pin in there. So the pin's going to go through the top down to the bottom and that'll be glued into place. So that should never come out. I know never is a big word, but that should never come out. So that's how I'm going to go about doing that. So um, there really isn't too much I can show you on this with the explanation of how I did it. Um, so I'm not going to show you a little speedy up video or anything on this. I'll just go ahead and get this done 
and then we'll probably just call this a video and then uh we'll get the wings mounted uh in a couple days and then uh get the cabane struts put on and the wing struts put on and at that point uh we'll make the interconnect rod uh between the upper and lower aileron so i'll see you guys next time i'm down in the shop